nispiċaw il-program tal-lume fil-kċina ta' Carmen Portelli. When you think of winter food, I'm pretty sure if you're Maltese, you're going to think of soup. And if you think of soup, you're going to think of kuskusu. And today we are in Carmen Portelli's kitchen. Carmen, I know that you love cooking Maltese food and you're very good at it as well. Thank you. <laughs> and um, today we're going to um, show our um, viewers mm -hmm. how to make kuskusu. Now, if we go back, where did you discover this recipe? Where, were you brought up with it in your family or did you discover it somewhere else? I was brought up with it. We had it probably mainly in Lent, during Lent time, because there was no meat in it. Um, actually, when we were young, we used to avoid going home on the Friday nights so we didn't have to eat cook school. <laughs> but as I got older, I got to enjoy it more and appreciate it. So I just sort of added my little bits and pieces and we know a lot of um, older Maltese people that sort of give me ideas. It's just little things that, I mean, the way I cook it, I used to peel the skin and I used to think it was just such a waste for the skin. And I thought is, this would be a good idea to get the stock, get the starch out of the um, skin. Because after all, kuskusu is really broad bean soup. That's right, it's a real peasant meal. It was what they grew in the garden. It was always, you know, the potato they would grow in the garden, the garlic, onion, broad beans, and the tomatoes. So it was everything from their garden, and that's all they probably could afford at that time. So take us how you do your kuskusu. Mm -hmm. what, what's first? So you need onions and garlic, I'm onions sure. Onions and garlic, and usually I would fry that a little, and then I would peel my broad beans, which is very easy that you just put in hot water and the peel comes off very easily. Instead of throwing the peels away, you put that in with the onions and some tomato paste or tomato and some bay leaf and you boil it for two hours, just simmer it very, very slowly so it'll actually thicken. And then in another pot, you start the process where you fry the onions and put the tomato paste, make a little bit of a sauce, and then add the stock by straining it. You strain the stock and squash with a potato masher Masha. to really get all the juice out of it. Then you throw in the beans and the potatoes. Then you just boil that, and then when that all softens and starts to thicken, then you throw in your pasta. In fact, what kind of pasta do you use? I see here that um, it's not actually called kuskusu. No, no. It's called pepperini. So it's an Italian type of thing. When you say kuskus, people actually think it's kuskus. A lot of people yes, think that. Yes. But it's nothing to do. Kuskus is a grain. Kuskus is a pasta. So it's actually a pasta made out of semolina. So now grain. we've put in the pasta. Yes, and then it's actually good to let it just, after it's started to change a little bit of colour, you switch it off and just let it rest. And by letting it rest, it'll swell and start getting thicker. And that's when you know it's ready to serve. So is the kusks meant to be sort of um, liquidy or sort of a thick? Sort of a in between, if that makes sense. Or maybe sense. the way you prefer it? Is it is yeah, it... yeah, some people would probably like it runny, like in our family. The ones that like it runny eat first, <laughs> and the ones that like it really um, stiff and thick eat a little bit later. So the longer you leave it, you get just a different texture as it cools down. Yeah. So it swells up and... Speaking mm. of family, we can see that your family helps a lot around in the kitchen. Yes, so yes. you're sort of passing um, those Maltese recipes that's that right. you got from your mother and most probably her, so from her mother, yes, that's and right. passing them on to, the, to your kids mm -hmm. and the next generation. Yes, that's right. The importance of doing that, um, we know that we live in Australia and, and we're so used to the Australian way of cooking. That's right. But it's so important to also pass on these traditional recipes, oh, isn't it? For sure. We're, we've been quite blessed by having my husband's side and my side we all love to cook so we've changed all the recipes and my family come from Malta Peter's family come from Gozo so we put the two recipes together <laughs> and we have a lot of fun with it but it's also the children are used to 
eating Maltese food. You mentioned that your husband is from Gozo. Now, yes. um, with the couscous, you've got to have shbeinit. Of course. And they're so typical of Gozo aren't they? They certainly are. <laughs> so you said you're from Malta and the husband is from Gozo. Do you make your own shbeinit? Of course. Of course, yes, you yes, have to. Yes, and there's nothing like making your own. How, how do you make shbeinit? Well, there's so many different ways. You can make, make them with rennet and you can make them, I make them with junket. And with that, I use um, two litres of milk, full cream milk. I put in a half a cup of powder milk and two junket tablets. So I just get the milk up to blood temperature and then you switch it off, throw in the junkets, you know, mash the junket tablets, stir it, cover it. And I like to just wrap it up with a tablecloth or whatever and just leave it sit quietly and it'll start to thicken. After an hour, you can open it and cut slices in it so you can see that it starts to get solid. Then when it cools right down, you put it in your baskets and... And okay. voila. voila! And then you put it in the, um, it's usually overnight, so the whey, the, wa the, the water's called whey, and that will just all drain out of the baskets because when you actually fill them... As it them, is right now. <laughs> when you fill them, you actually fill them right to the top. So by morning, because of all the water that's drained out, they're half the size. And then with the couscous, so we're, we're, we've made the couscous, when do you put the cheeselets in? Just before you serve it. So you've got that nice, it's nice to just pour a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. It's just nice to have that really hot soup. And then you put your spoon in and you've got that nice cold cheese. Yeah. And the cheese would melt, wouldn't it? You'd have that sort of a little oh, bit yeah. of a melt. The, the bottom of it just melts and seeps through. You're making me hungry now, bit. Carmen. <laughs> some people choose to just cut a little piece, you know, with each spoonful. Some people like to break it all in pieces and mix it. And you have to eat it with bread, of course. So if you have a nice big thick piece of Vienna and you crusty dip it in bread. crusty bread. Oh, yeah. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. When I watch my mother and my mother-in-law, when the enjoyment they get from watching us cook all these recipes, and now our children are doing the same, it must be a great feeling for them, for their achievement. So I just can't wait for the same feeling. Yeah. Well, Carmen, thank you so much thank for you. inviting us thank to your you kitchen. Very much. That was Carmen Portelli, mm. and today's recipe is kuskusu, that's broad bean soup. Obdikiri hata kuskusu neju fitmi me program mi horta Maltese down under. Al dawk li shtu i amlu kunta tmana, amlu dan permet tal email maltese tv at gmail.com kivu kol permet tal pajna tana fuq Facebook Maltese down under. Jena marlin nishti ilkom is saha unatikom appuntamenti hor al palum jima flistes hin.